are used to rough situations like this. Right. The city's a war zone. King Kong, mutant alligators. Then Alex Casey shoots the place up every weekend. Look, I never even carried a gun until a couple of days ago. Well, my dad used to be a cop there. Tell some pretty wild stories. Stuff like this? No, no. Just normal bad stuff. Kind of like your books, Wake. I used to tease dad that he was just like Alex Casey. You've read me. Oh, sure. You're a pretty good writer. A little heavy on the metaphors, maybe. Nobody's ever said that before. We're coming up on the power plant. See the lit building over there? And that's the dam further up the river. I can't land here. I'll take her down the road across the river. Just get me there, Sheriff. Good luck with that, I guess. Why don't you just land quite heavily? You've got room, and it's not like you're gonna need to take off again. I know, it's like, why didn't they just land here? Like, there's room. Like, they were about to touch down before Alan had to kind of just fall. There really does seem like there's room to land. <laughs> I don't know, maybe she, maybe Sheriff Breaker just got tired of hanging out with Alan Wake. What we didn't see after that uh, lovely little cutscene is that he kept asking, like, what do you like best about my writing? Yup. Yeah. Uh-huh. I bet. I bet that there was, like, a moment where Alan was like, so, a, a little heavy on the metaphors, huh? Uh, why, why do you think that? Maybe, <laughs> you know, I, I won't get offended if you tell me why. It's, you know, it's fine if you don't like my writing. It's fine. I won't freak out or anything. <laughs> Oh, he's such a baby. <laughs> well, but that's just our perception of him. Maybe that's not what happened. M maybe Alan took her criticism in stride. M maybe he just gracefully accepted the compliment, and then they crashed because of birds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, okay, Alan is becoming slightly less of a chode because of this game and the events he has been put through, so maybe he is learning, you know? Oh, yikes. Oh, buddy. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, this 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 chapter is hard, by the way. Like, I don't know if you've noticed, but I've gone into like glaucoma vision, like, on every fight in this chapter. <laughs> yeah, they they really. Well, that was strange. I wonder why that happened. Hmm. Huh. Weird. Anyway, I I don't want to call back to gaslight or anything, but uh, but whenever that happens, there tends to be shenanigans. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 almost like a staple of this Let's Play so far, right? <laughs> you know, sometimes you like, sometimes you gotta hit your TV, right? You know, you know those old CRT monitors and how they have a degauss button. Oh yeah, definitely. Well, it's like that except percussive maintenance. Yeah. You know. You Same basic idea. You don't want to let your gauss build up. That's just that's gross. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure to degauss your pets. That's right. I just usually, like Bob Barker says. <laughs> I usually need to get a, a screwdriver up there and just jiggle it around to not oh. set the gauss loose. Degauss the Klaus. That's that's my plan. <laughs> <laughs> a little cutie. Oh. Maybe we should have maybe we should have your guinea pig on for a live demonstration of degaussing your pets. I don't know. <laughs> uh, here's a new song from a band that uh, they always remind me of our local rock legends, the old gods. I couldn't tell you why. I guess it's just you know, one of those <laughs> Yeah, things. weird. Anyway, hmm. here's poets of the I just wanna say uh I really appreciate that they've put in like this this in joke kind of thing here. Uh, we're we're just gonna stop and chill out for a bit and listen to this cool song. But before we do that I just want to say, you guys are great. I love you all. What are you apologizing for? <laughs> Why are you buttering us up? What do you mean? 
That's what. So uh, I'll be I'll be taking over the LP because CJ could just disappeared up his own ass. <laughs> <laughs> I really did. I really did. The best part is that the song is five minutes long, so I had enough time to jerk myself off and finish. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Man, life is good. <laughs>
It's it's important to look back. Oh, absolutely. You gotta have some self-reflection, even if like, even if you are like narcissist looking in a mirror, like like you're so beautiful. Absolutely. Uh, it's like it's like you've fallen into a pond. Exactly. Trying to reach out to your own reflection, but the pond was actually your butt. Exactly. <laughs> you're right. Kind of <laughs> like that. Yeah. Just like in I the do, middle. I do like having hands up my own ass. <laughs> of course. I'm just I'm just glad that you were able to bring your microphone with you. <laughs> so my original idea for that, right? I stood there and listened to the whole song in the in the recording, and my idea for that was like, okay, I'll do like a recap of the events so far to make Alan Wake's journey seem like more like meaningful and more worthwhile cuz that's kind of this game's theme song is that song. There, there's like a they made an actual Alan Wake music video with like live action footage from handsome man Ilka Billy. But um what I realized in attempting to make that is uh this game doesn't really have 5 minutes of emotionally driven cutscenes in it <laughs> so far. <laughs> it will by the end, I'm sure, but it doesn't it can't really support itself in that way. Yeah, the, the plot hasn't really gotten going. So I, I decided to just have some fun with it instead. Of course. You've got, you've got Alan Wake thinking back on other C. Jacobs Let's Plays. And <laughs> such, a, such a meta thing as, like, the time when Alan Wake and Max Payne got together to play Quantum Break. <laughs> it, 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 man, that was, that's good. You should look that up if you haven't seen it. That was pretty amusing and it's just because um as i've said before i i have the sam lake poo face i have i have <laughs> resting poo face man sam lake has really angular cheeks mm. it it's very strange how sam lake doesn't just resemble max Payne one max because he is his face model it also is like, he just kind of looks like his game model with the angular polygon. <laughs> well, great. Time to enter Michael Bay's home for abandoned movie franchises. <laughs> There's a strategy to get through this area uh, relatively easily. I recently had to replay through this game on Nightmare difficulty to pick up all the manuscript pages that I missed, uh, and I discovered a strategy for this area that I don't know if I actually employ, but I'll, I'll mention it when it starts being relevant. This area's got a pretty cool gimmick for, for such, a, such a short little segment, and I kind of wish they had gotten more use out of it. That's the gimmick. Uh, yeah. If the taken, if the taken touch the power lines, they just go. <laughs> Which is weird, actually, thinking about it, because it's like, I guess electricity technically is on the light spectrum. Uh, yeah, I mean, I suppose. Um... Like it, like it makes me wonder if light and electricity function the same way, because like electric currents generate light. Ah. Uh. Well, um, yeah, I guess, in a way. Sk Skippy Granola, tell me, what do you know about the engineering world? Um, pro probably not enough to talk this much shit. <laughs> <laughs> if, if I'm being brutally honest. But like, I, I know, I know virtually nothing. So, hey. Well, yeah, I mean, you know. Electrical arts arcs obviously uh, can create light, uh, just you know, from the movement of ions. I guess, I guess so. Yeah. You know, I, like I, like I, lightning. Right. Yeah. Exactly. But it makes me wonder. Like, could anything that generates electricity kill a taken? Like, if I had a stun gun, would I be like invincible? Um. Well, let's see. Let's let's do a quick Google. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Lumens in uh How many lumens in a lightning bolt? How many lumens does a bolt of lightning put out? It's a good question. 
while Skippy's looking that up, the, the strategy that I mentioned for getting through this segment is to not even bother with the flashlight, because you can just shoot the Taken and they'll get knocked backwards into the the uh, into the Transformers and blow up. So you, you don't knows. even really... Wait, nobody knows? Nobody knows. Yeah, well, I guess it would be kind of hard to, like, get empirical data on that. Yeah, because you can't really... Hmm, no, but you can have controllable lightning strike. I'd like to- I'd like to know what the relative brightness of a lightning bolt is, because if- if lightning were to flash, uh, close to a Taken, I ah. suppose that would destroy them. That- you know what? That's- that is an interesting question, too. Like, it- it makes me wonder, like, all of the light sources that kill the Taken in these games, it, like, are man-made. So, like, yeah. it makes me wonder, like, what if non-man-made light sources, like, okay, if a Taken got too close to a volcano, would the intense light from the, like, generated by the magma, would that kill the Taken? Hmm. I wonder if it has to be sustained light, but no, it doesn't have to be sustained light because flashbangs will kill them outright. Yeah, that's true. I, I wonder if it's just, like, any light. Like, any form of, like, okay... It, it makes me wonder if somewhere in Departure, Alan Wake has defined the rules. If he, like, <laughs> spoiled the magic by saying, like, Okay, so, the darkness is just an absence of light, and that's it. So, any light of any form brighter than maybe, like, a night light will do ya. If, if you were to chain down a Taken and surround him by candles, and the way he broke the rules. would that... Didn't would that kill it? What was at stake? Ah, oh, if you if you like list them one by one, like would it pass like some threshold? Hmm. The there seems to be a lot of science that we could do here in this magical horror game. <laughs> it's it's true. Maybe we don't need to dissect the frog. Maybe so. Maybe we don't need to look at the owl turd. <laughs> Those comics are not that great. Yeah. Heyo! No. Oh, <laughs> zing. Oh no! I'm being punched by a physical representation of motivation. It's- it's- the joke is that I'm unmotivated. Ha! Huh. It's so relatable! Don't you feel like the world is constantly beating down on you? Well, here's some comics to remind you. Man, is this relatable or what? Huh? Huh? Ah. Oh. <laughs> Wow. Well, that's... Hey, congratulations, William T.G. Randall. Thank you for your sacrifice. What a badass. I know. He, li he, lived, a very, he lived a very fulfilled life, that William T.G. Randall, I would say. And I suppose he was rewarded with a bridge, so... <laughs> Congrats, I guess. But it's a he rotating was... bridge. That's I cool. Get across until I found a What's the point? The okay. What is the point of a bridge that rotates sideways? Hmm. Why not just have a drawbridge? It's probably easier to engineer, I guess. Oh, you know what? Yeah, maybe. Because you could just put the bridge on a rotating platform and then let it do its own thing. As opposed to a drawbridge where you have to, like, have mechanisms to raise the bridge. Yeah, you know, you need, like, tension wires and motors and stuff. And, ugh. Yeah. So I, I guess in small town America, you know, the I guess they wouldn't uh, they wouldn't have the government funding to be able to make like a super high uh, high cost bridge like that. I suppose the answer is this is just easier to animate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But also they made a pretty cool set piece out of it, so like they definitely made do, I would say with their cool-ass rotating bridge. Does it have a power transmission tower on it? Or is that just... Oh, it must just be a support structure. Hey! <laughs> hey, come on! Who's messing with the controls? Get out of there, you kids! I think the bridge has it in for Alan, is the I, thing. I think the bridge is gonna become a darkness monster, and then it's gonna get up and be like, I'm Bridge Tron! I'm gonna kill you, Alan Wake! <laughs> <Lake. laughs> I'm That'd gonna... be a pretty cool boss, yeah! Oh, I'm gonna kill you, Alan! Well, when you said the Michael Bay movie... Ah, <laughs> ah, okay, yeah. That's the connection. You brought what? it on home right there. One might have hoped. Yeah, that it was uh, a trend. instead... 
Instead, we're just being uh, attacked by birds. Of course, because any time that you're in the middle of nowhere on a precarious platform, it's birds. It's, yep. That's what I should title all remaining episodes of Alan Wake. Alan Wake, episode 6, part 35. It's birds. It's birds, man. No, 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 it's, it's, it's birds, not Birdman. He's different, different continuity. Oh, that's right. That was an incredibly artful movie. Yeah. Fame is a burden, a isn't it, Alan Wake? <laughs> I liked, hey, I liked that movie. I'll have you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the thing, the thing with Birdman, um, as I was watching it, uh, it's definitely a movie by actors for actors. Yeah, it cut. Yes, yeah. I will. I will say that. Yes, I liked it, but I will admit that. Yes, it's like when Stephen King writes about writers. Yeah, kinda. I really appreciate that throughout all of this, the bridge has still been going ape shit in the background. <laughs> just, just whipping around. Hey, I'm trying to watch my brilliance. You <laughs> stupid bridge. I appreciate that episode of Night Springs. I like that one because, like, <laughs> they couldn't. Occasionally, the Twilight Zone would have that too, where they would have episodes that were about crazy bullshit, but like they would be like humorous, right? Like, that one was about an omniscient god who's kind of a dumbass. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> right. the, the Twilight Zone would occasionally have stuff like that, too, where, like, the concept is, like, still, like, standard Twilight Zone fare, where it's, like, dark and fucked, but, like, they wouldn't take it so seriously. And I really appreciate that. Yeah, I, I don't know. I guess I, I, like, I like that whole thing about, well, I created two old ladies and then I put some weird in the basement. Let's see, let's see where this is going. <laughs> right, yeah, like, what could that weird thing in the basement possibly be? I have no idea. I just, it completely boggles the mind. Strap in, old ladies, things are about to get weird. <laughs> <laughs> and then they go on a field trip with Miss Frizzle, right? That's the, that's where that was going? Yeah, of course, they go directly up Arnold's innards. 
And he's like, I never consented to this! <laughs> and she's like, too bad! <laughs> <laughs> too bad! It's wacky! <laughs> it's for education! <laughs> Get out of me, classmates! Get out! Poor Arnold! He was always getting shit on! Why? Uh, Why? What? <laughs> because he brought it on himself, okay? He's always like, I knew I should have stayed home today. And he never does. Yeah, why doesn't he ever stay home? It's because he secretly I, likes it. Maybe so. Maybe that's maybe that's the core of his character, right? Is that like he says that he he wanted to stay home that day, but in reality he knows that he didn't. He likes yeah, the attention. He's addicted to the thrill. Oh, I wasn't gonna like I wasn't gonna make it like a sick a sickness, but okay, if you wanna go there. <laughs> yeah, I think that I think that Arnold of the Magic School Bus is a profoundly ill little boy. He he has a crippling weakness for uh, for field trips. <laughs> That's right. His foolhardy addiction to field trips will be the <laughs> The Magic oh. School Bus is great. Un okay, if Alan Wake composed this entire universe. It makes me wonder if he had to go out of his way to write every facet of everything that exists. Like, ah. it, it makes me wonder if he has been trapped in the dark, in like the dark, in Garth Marenghi's dark place for years, for de for thousands of years, just writing about every little facet of the universe that he now inhabits. That raises a lot of questions about why he hates the Scottish so much. <laughs> <laughs> loves, loves Nordic people, though. Absolutely. Especially <laughs> the way they walk. <laughs> yeah! Not bad. Not, not bad. I killed four human beings with that flare. I'll well, have you know. Technically, you just destroyed their shadow-infused husk, but oh, I'll, I'll, I'll allow it. <laughs> You'll concede. <laughs> yeah, I'll concede. Honestly, there's no point splitting hairs when we could be splitting skulls. Oh shit! Like that dog from the first episode. Oh, little sweetie. Oh. Trust no one in the dark. <laughs> Tr yep, trust no one, especially not that Barry guy. That's why I never go for sleepovers. Because <laughs> I just know you pricks will draw on my face. God, Alan Wake with a, with a dick on his cheek. That <laughs> man. With just, just a little tiny sharpie penis drawn on his face. Man. Right there. Miss Weaver, Cynthia, I'm a friend. Prove it. Uh, you knew Zane, Thomas Zane. You're the lady of the light in the song. You can help me. About time. Young man, I've been waiting a very long time for you. It's in the well-lit room. Excuse me? What you need to drive the darkness back. The well-lit room is at the dam. I built the room to keep it safe. Will it help me find Alice? Will it get me back to the cabin? Fine, let's go. I can get my friends to come back with the helicopter. Oh, we won't go outside. Never at night. That's rule number one. You've been breaking the rules, young man, and where has that gotten us, hmm? No, I have a secret route, a lit route, an old water pipe. Something was damaged at the transformer yard. It's drained all the reserve power. Without it, the pipe will go dark. The power to the yard must be cut. Let me guess. You want me to do it. Young man, you're the one who likes to break the rules. I can't be outside in the dark. The kill switch is outside. Preparing for these times, the dark tides. You have found my caches, haven't you? You can see the signs. Very few people can. Yes, please. Take what you need. This is all for you, for the likes of us. We, we do Tom's work, don't we? Hurry! The switch is on the wall facing the shore. Never, never put off till tomorrow what you can illuminate today. Ben Franklin. <laughs> 
<laughs> yup, I'm sh yeah, well, he did get illuminated by that lightning bolt. Wait. <laughs> I gotta say that I really appreciate that Cynthia Weaver, like, she, okay, she was like, back in the, back in the 70s, she was a smart cookie. She was like, okay, forces of darkness, easiest way to fight against them, light and power, just, just go to the dam, duh. It I makes mean, perfect sense. Yeah, of course. I mean, although I have to, I have to take some points away from her for being written by Alan Wake. Because this is very <laughs> contrived. You know what? I guess that's I guess that's true. Alan Wake did write up this whole scenario. He's like, okay, okay. How how do I do this? All right. What if what if a crazy old lady has like frigging light bulb artillery? She'd been living this insanity for decades. It, it you know it's the thing is right. I try. I, I try not to criticize this game for being contrived, right? Because, yeah, th this is an especially silly thing, right? Like, what? how does she have the world's stock of light bulbs? Because, like, e okay, even if she did, e even if she did have this crazy setup that she has, she would have to be changing light bulbs, like, every second of every day in order to keep order everything order. perfectly now lit so that there would be no shadows. Of course, and then, you know, she'd have to go around to all these these weird, uh, you know, out-of-the-way places and, and put down luminescent paint and stuff. Well, okay, it makes me want- Man, lots of things are making me wonder things in this episode, I've noticed. Right? You gotta wonder. I- I- <laughs> I- I- it, Man, making me wonder makes me wonder. Did she- has all of that stuff been there for years? Cause she can't get around in like- like, she's just an old lady, right? She can't get to all of these impossible places. Like... In in the first... I think it was like episode 2, there was that plane that fell out of the sky, and then we used it to get up to a cache. How did she get up there before the plane was there? Like, it would make a lot more sense if maybe she had, um... A bunch of, I don't know, the Baker Street Irregulars. Yay! You know what? Yeah! It, they kind of alluded to that, right, at the beginning of the episode. What with like Sheriff Baker, Sheriff Breaker being like, "Oh, you call everybody in town, tell them the code word Night Springs. It's a secret society or whatever." But they don't ever elaborate on that. And I have a feeling that that is there specifically because of your complaint that there is no like secret society and it's just her. Yeah, I, I like suppose that. Alan Snidely. Uh, remark there, you know, who designs these things. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he was talking to himself. <laughs> is is this stupid? I don't know, I don't have time. I gotta write this plot. Yep. But yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think that that is kind of a weak point of this game, that they expect you to believe that this old lady did all of this stuff when, like, Clearly, she's not totally sane. <laughs> it's it's certainly the most contrived part of the game. Uh, it is for reasons that we'll see at the end of this episode. Yes, that. So I've I said this at the beginning of this let's play. I really like this game's story, but the story of this game gets a little bit hackneyed. <laughs> <laughs> Just in certain parts. Yeah. Like, and there's certain things that happen in the story where it's like, there's only so much you can chalk up to. It's a meta narrative thing. Like, the reason that Deus Ex Machina happens is because that's a story cliche, and Alan's a writer, so he wrote it in because he can do that, you know? Like, there's, there's only so much leeway that you can give to that, because remember that this story was written by a real, live human being. Yes. The, the, <laughs> the video game story was written by a writer at Remedy. Yeah. Right. And so, and so you, it's kind of hard to discern sometimes when the writing is, like, intentionally, intentionally weak because of flaws in Alan Wake, the character's writing, 
or when, like, it's written poorly because of poor writing. Yeah. It's just hard to figure that out, and I think that is an interesting discussion, but you'd have to talk to someone at Remedy to find out when that was intentional and not, so, well. <laughs> exactly. So, I, I don't know, it's just one of those things where you gotta, you know, suspend your disbelief, swallow your pride, and, and not be all squinky about it. You, got, you gotta not be a hipster, like we are. So just we, enjoy we've already, the ride. We've already failed. <laughs> <laughs>